Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my mixed media art journal page. It is a dog and it's done using the randomly drawn one word prompts from the Pick a Stick Challenge Facebook group. There's a link below the video and you can go ask to join that group if you would like to have these types of challenges. There's an altered tag and an artist trading card challenge each month as well as the art journal page. Also below the video you'll find a link to Peg Robinson's page that she made using the same prompts which is kind of fun to see what someone else did using the same prompts. So the first prompt for this one was carve and I sometimes carve my own stamps using Speedy Carve by Speedball and their little tools and that was the first thing I was thinking about. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it a different way so that people can see that you don't have to spend the money on the speedy carve and the tools. If you don't want to, you can do it a lot cheaper. So this is some fun foam, self-adhesive fun foam from, you know, the, the craft, the kids craft department in, in the Walmart or whatever, Michael's, whatever, cheap stuff. <clears throat> and I stuck the two pieces together so that I would have double thick. Also, sometimes you can find it in a thicker um, format, but this is real thin. So I, I stacked one on top of the other using this self-adhesion. And then I cut out some shapes and then I stuck my shapes down on some cardboard backs so that it would be a little bit more firm. And then I'm carving into it using a wood burning tool. <clears throat> the smell's not too great when you do this. <laughs> it smells like burning plastic, but it doesn't hurt the tool. It doesn't really hurt me. And it quickly can make impressions into the fun foam. So easy. You can also do this using a ballpoint pen, but you have to add a lot of pressure. With the heat thing, which I also got at Walmart, I think, uh, probably for 10 bucks or something, um, it's very quick and easy to do this, so I prefer it. Of course, you don't want to touch that thing to your finger because it will burn you. It's hot. It's designed for for burning wood, making designs uh, with burnt wood on type of, top of pine or something. Um, but it's good for other things, too. It's good for cutting out your own stencils out of inexpensive plastic. And that's the reason I originally bought it. And then it's also good for this. So these are just super random shapes and I just, I wanted to use them. Um, sorry about the autofocus guys. I, once again, new computer forgot to turn off the autofocus. I don't know why it's suddenly doing that. It's the same software as it was before, but now it wants to do that. So I have to remember. Um, yeah, that's really annoying. I don't enjoy that at all, but it, but all I did, um, for the next step is called emboss. And emboss means a lot of things. I, I mean, the tech, you can, there's a lot of techniques you can do. Emboss means one thing. It means to make raised. It means to make a raised texture. And so the first thing I did was to use some heavy gesso, super heavy gesso, and uh, press my homemade stamps into it to make a raised texture on my page. There's a lot of texture on this page. I wish you could feel it. Uh, but of course you can't. You can only look at it and look at the close-ups at the end. You'll be able to see the texture. So then uh, I decided I'd go ahead and add some color with some embossing powder. Embossing powder is a plastic ground up with pigment that you melt onto a sticky surface. So I just put some colors of embossing powder on there and let it stick to any place that was still wet. Um, just stick to the gesso. And then I heated it up to melt the plastic like you do when you're embossing. This is one way of embossing, heat embossing. There's also pressure embossing in there. You know, emboss just means make raised. So there's lots of ways to do it. Then I felt like I didn't have enough pattern and color in some of the places. So I got out my Versamark ink pad. This is just a sticky ink pad. It doesn't have any color, it's just sticky. Of course, my pad doesn't look like it's clear because it's got so much junk on it from having it for years that it just looks kind of gray and nasty, but it still works. It doesn't deposit any color onto anything that I stamp 
you know, I use the stamp to stamp with the ink, doesn't deposit any color. So then I need the embossing powder on there and the embossing powder sticks to the sticky stuff and then you can heat emboss it. So I did that with my stamps. I added some more color here and there and around with the different embossing powder colors that I was using. The colors for this project, um, the, the randomly drawn colors are periwinkle, which is kind of a bluish lavender, and uh, blue, which could be light blue, dark blue, royal blue, navy blue, whatever blue you want, because it's just blue. <laughs> so um, I used a light blue and uh, another kind of a medium tone blue, plus this lavendery color. And then I threw in some moss green as well, just for contrast, because I thought it was interesting. And a lot of my little stamp shapes that I made are similar to a feather or a leaf. So if it was a leaf, it would be green, probably. So anyway, I had enough of embossing, so I decided to just get out some acrylic paint and my finger and just fill in some areas. Um, I, I mean, I would have continued to emboss forever to get all this whole page done. It's a nine by 12 art journal, so it's pretty big and I was getting pretty tired of it. So I just decided to fill in some of the areas with some paint and my finger, which is something I like to do anyway, it kind of integrates things and uh, blends everything together. So then the next prompt is dog and that's in the shape category. That, um, we have one shape drawn each month. Uh, could be anything, could be a circle, could be a, uh, you know, a rectangle, or it could be a dog, or it could be a fish. Last month it was fish, so this time it's dog. And so I am just using my little scratch paper that I was using to pick up the embossing powder and put it back into its container um, to draw just a generic, kind of like a, maybe it's kind of like a pit bull. I don't know. It has kind of a squarish head and short ears, but it's just a dog, some sort of dog. And I had torn the paper in half and then realized I needed a bigger piece, so I had to tape it back together. But I'm just using a drawing tool to do this, and I just want mostly its face, but I realized I was going to have to have probably the top part of its paws um, and its neck, maybe. So just, just drawing along. Um, Nothing major, it's just trying to get the proportions sort of correct. And there you have it, a dog. Then I cut it out so that I could place it around and figure out where it's going to be on the page and realize that I probably needed to, to add more to it. But then I decided, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it. <laughs> That's what I usually do anyway. I just wing it. So these are some uh, gel prints that I did the other day when I was doing a, uh, a technique video on linear, how to make linear designs with your gel print. That would be lines and grids. And these are just the leftovers from that when I was doing that. Um, I decided to use them to do some paper piecing to make an interesting dog. So I'm using my little drawing as a pattern and just cutting out around it. Um, nothing fancy, people. I'm just holding the, the drawing over the piece of gel print and cutting around. So it's not perfect. I'm not doing anything perfect. This is very fly by the seat of your pants. Do it as you go. Um, I'm still putting the pieces back on to try to make sure that you know, I'm doing it proportionately and to get things in the right areas, but it's just really cutting out pieces of paper and sticking them on there. That's it. Um, you know, this is an art journal page. It's not something that's that I'm going to hang up. It's going to be in my journal. I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours carefully fussing about everything. I want it to be quick and simple and fun um, and exercise in, in practice in art, uh, self-expression without making it too fussy. 
you know, you can do that. You can go a little bit crazy and you could spend 10 hours doing this. <laughs> then it would be in your journal and be like, why did I spend 10 hours doing that? That was silly. So I'm quickly doing it. And that is, that is the key for art journal, I think. I mean, some people, they might want to art journal for hours. And that's cool too, because that's still self-expression. That's their choice. But I want to do it fairly quickly. I've, I want to have fun and do it quickly. So I'm cutting some other pieces. Um, I decided to make one of his ears and over his eye a darker color. Um, the base of the dog is whitish. Um, it's a, a print, it's a cleanup print that I, I cleaned up a bunch of paint off the plate that was in purples and blues with white paint onto white paper. So that's why it looks like that. And then I have a light blue piece and a kind of dark purple blue piece. And I'm just um, alternating those different colors, making some shadowy areas with the, the light blue, making kind of a spot or something on, over his eye and on his back with the darker color. And then of course, darker nose, darker eyes, from a different piece and then I've got some pink that I've cut the insides of the ears and I'm going to cut the inside of the mouth uh, out of that pink and as I'm lining everything up I'm taking the patterns and putting them back over just to make sure that I get things where they should be some more shadows with the uh, lighter blue a light blue is a good shadow color I think even when you're just coloring or whatever. Decide to make a little bit of a spot on his back. Um, just filling in things the way I like them and cutting the paper without any pattern at all at this point. Just cutting it. It's all deli paper, I think, with the exception of the white background. The other pieces were deli paper pieces <clears throat> done on the six by six plate. So then I have the next prompt, which is spritz. Spritzing generally requires something with a sprayer. <laughs> so I'm using Marabou Art Spray that is permanent when it's dry. It's an acrylic spray from Marabou. And I spritz, I put the pattern back over to kind of mask the dog so that it doesn't get any of the spray on it. And I spritzed it with a lavender color and then dried it. And then the next prompt was drip. And remember, uh, there's six prompts that you do in order. That's the only rule. There is a wild card. And if you don't want, to want one of the prompts, you can always use the wild card. So I use the wild card knife and I'm just using my knife to help me take off the tape because some of my collaging has gone over the tape so that's what I use the knife for got a little bit crazy on the side there but I fixed it with some pen work and I'm having to glue things down a little bit here and there where I've kind of pulled them up while taking the tape off so the next thing that I did after drip at knife is just to add some Posca pen, black Posca pen, and then I'm using my pen, um, what is this thing called? A water tank brush, a brush that has water in the, in the handle to blend out and make kind of a shadow around my image that I've glued on with collage and also inside the dog image as well. And just blending it out so that it's not such a harsh line with that water brush. You can always do that with the Posca pins as long as they don't are not dry. You just have to do a little bit at a time and then blend it and then go to the next thing and do a little bit at a time and blend it. They, the Posca pins are acrylic paint in a pen format. So it works really good for this. And I can add some shadows and some area around the outside of the dog that helps it to blend into the background a little bit but yet still stand out. Does that make sense? <laughs> Looks like it's supposed to be there, not just stuck on there like a sticker. That's what I'm trying to say. 
And again, not fussy. I'm doing this quickly. This is, is pretty abstracted. It's not super precise or, or anything. I'm just having fun with it. It's a fun little dog. He's got a good, happy look on his face. <laughs> like he's about to jump out and lick you. So that's what I was going for. Fixing up his eyeballs a little bit and giving him some shadow around his eyes so that they look as if they're uh, recessed into his, you know, skull. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Giving him some spots where his whiskers might be. Just little things like that, little details. And then I'm also going to do the same um, little bit of highlighting with my white Posca pen here and there to add some more detail and make it more interesting. Like you do. Got to use your white Posca pen or else it's just not the same. Then I thought I need a saying. And so I decided to write my saying um, from the internet. You know, you type in dog quotes and you get something. And I liked this one. This one's true. People will know how large your soul is by how you treat a dog. And that's, that's true. That is, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? But of course the whole thing didn't fit. <laughs> it's not like I measured or anything. I just wrote it. So then I needed the words, a dog, um, to be somewhere on the page so that the quote makes sense. So after I wrote over this and made sure it was nice and dark, uh, you know, there's a lot of texture on there and there's embossing powder, which is a plastic on there. So I needed to write over it to make sure it was nice and, and clear and dark. And then I just wrote the words, a dog, um, on that same dark piece of paper with the lines. It's kind of a purpley blue dark. And I cut that out and put it at the top of the page. So then you can go, people will know how large your soul by how you treat. And then you can go back to the top, wrap around and say a dog. So that's how I finished my page. I think it's cute. I also am going to say that this is my animal portrait for August, since I ran out of August and did not get an animal portrait done, I'm gonna double down. This is my animal portrait for August and then I'll make another one for September at the end of the month because I usually do the animal portrait at the end of the month and this is the beginning of the month. So I feel like I have made up for my not getting my animal portrait done last month by making this really cute dog. Yep, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. And it's right next to, next to a cat in the book, too. So dogs and cats, cats and dogs. Things are getting crazy around here. <laughs> I also felt that uh, something needed to be up in that upper right corner. So I cut out a, a bone dog treat shape out of the same paper and glued it on there. So I hope you've enjoyed this Pick a Stick Challenge video. And I hope that you give me a thumbs up and that you leave a comment or question below. You subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please turn on your notification bells. That really helps me out, helps you out to know when there's a new video. Of course, you can pin this on Pinterest, share it on Facebook. Um, anything that you want to do to share it is great. And um, yeah, I think that's it for me. I did put some white Posca pen around the words and the bone and then I also came back in with black which happened after I shut the camera off. <laughs> so that is it for me for Pick a Stick for September. Thanks. Bye-bye.